Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please silence your electronic devices. The program will begin shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, please silence your cell phones. The program is about to begin. Yeah. 
Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Glad you're here. We have an exciting day ahead of us. We're looking forward to sharing with you all the work that we've been doing ahead of the 2020 Census. Today, we'll hear from our director, Dr. Stephen Dillingham, as well as Fernando Armstrong, our regional director of our Philadelphia regional office. And I'm so happy that we have with us Stephanie Reed, the executive director of Philly Counts. We're thrilled to be here at to celebrate Constitution Day. We're also very excited to educate you all a little bit about the history of the census and why an accurate count is critical for all of our communities. But first, we'd like to kick it off with a video about the importance of the 2020 Census. Beginning in March, the U.S. Census Bureau will invite households across the country to participate in the 2020 Census. But what is the Census? Simply put, the Census is a headcount of every person living in the United States. To be sure the government represents the people, the U.S. Constitution requires a population count every 10 years. Ever since 1790, the Census has determined the number of seats 
each state receives in the U.S. House of Representatives. It is, and always has been, a cornerstone of our democracy. We still use it to determine representation, but leaders also use the data to make decisions. Your response helps guide planning for the future of our communities. The 2020 Census will help inform decisions on how billions of dollars are allocated annually for critical public services like roads, schools, hospitals and health care clinics, fire and emergency response services, and hundreds of other programs. In 2020, for the first time, you'll be able to complete the Census online, by phone or by mail. It asks a few simple questions, like how many people live in your home on April 1st, including their age and sex, and if there are any children living there. You should know that by law, all census responses are completely confidential, and your personal information cannot be shared with any law enforcement agencies. Every person counts, no matter who you are or where you live. So whether your family has participated for decades or the 2020 census will be your first, we all have a role in shaping the future of our country. And now I'd like to introduce all of you to our director, Dr. Stephen Dillingham. Dr. Stephen Dillingham is the 25th Census Bureau director. He has more than 25 years of experience in statistical, research, and senior management, and legal experience in the federal government. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Dillingham. Michael, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, it, it is Happy Constitution Day. And uh, today we're get, gathered in Philadelphia, and as I learned last night, not only is it the city of brotherly love, but I'm told the city of sisterly affection as well. So we'll be signing, uh, no, we'll be celebrating the signing of the U.S. Constitution, and, and I do have one with me if you'd like to sign it. Uh, but it, we're signing a commemoration of September 17, 1787, and its special connection to the census. The Constitution is unique because it places government power in the hands of the people. The census is one of the few national activities the American public does together. It's the largest peacetime mobilization in our country and the cornerstone of democracy. Now, Article I, Section 2 of the Constitution calls for an enumeration to apportion representatives among the states. Our founding fathers recognized that in order to provide equal representation in the House of Representatives, they had to know how many people lived here and where they lived. The Constitution originally set the number of representatives at 65, in 1787, although I can't remember, I wasn't quite there then, but uh, at 65 is where they began, and mandated that the country conduct its first census three years later. In 1790, U.S. Marshals visited households across our nation to conduct the first enumeration. And if you could just imagine that effort, riding on horseback to count everyone, even though it's 13 states, that's quite a geographical spread. It took more than two years to collect and to publish the data, and to count everyone. And Congress expected about two million people. But to their surprise, the results came in almost double that, more than 3.9 million. Overnight, the number of congressional representatives grew to 105 members. And I'm told by people here that increased the size of Independence Hall just across the way there. Through times of war, industrial revolution, and technological and demographic changes, the census has been taken every 10 years as required by our Constitution. Since the first census, making sure everyone is counted has been a challenge. The 2020 census is no different. We live in a diverse nation of more than 330 million people and more than 140 million housing units. This alone makes conducting a national census very complex. It's hard to imagine that the Founding Fathers could envision the scope of the 2020 census uh, today. It's important to remember that the data collected through the census impacts key decisions made at all levels of government 
and by businesses and by nonprofit organizations. Besides congressional apportionment, an accurate population count determines how billions of federal dollars are spent each year and how funds are distributed to and by states, cities, and rural communities. Our goal to, during the 2020 census is to count everyone once, only once, and in the right place. And many of you have heard that and will continue to hear that. Once, only once, and in the right place. In six months, households will begin receiving an invitation to respond to the 2020 census. Responding is easy, safe, and important. For the first time, the public will have three ways of responding. Online, over the phone, and it can be a smartphone or a not so smartphone, <laughs> or through a paper questionnaire which every household will receive if they haven't answered on the internet or by phone. This means everyone living in the United States can complete the 2020 census questionnaire almost anywhere at any, any time. It can be completed by passengers on a bus with Wi-Fi, or at a church, or at a sports event, or at almost any event. If today was the day, we could do it right here. If a person lacks internet connectivity, they can connect from other locations, including public libraries across our nation that will have their doors open for this purpose. Or they can call, as I mentioned, or they can simply mail it in. Answers are protected and confidential. Personal data cannot and will not be shared with anyone, including law enforcement. It's a massive undertaking, and we are increasingly ready. We are on mission, on budget, on schedule to complete the biggest, most efficient census ever. We are inviting thousands of partners with a new focus on our nation's schools, like the Holy Redeemer School here in Philadelphia. We think that by working with partners and complete count committees, we can reach the hard to count and improve self-response rates in every state. The Philly Counts Committee, established by Mayor Jim Kinney, has an innovative, inclusive, and well-planned strategy. It's led by Stephanie Reed and her professional team in thousands of volunteers, and these will be trained volunteers. She's doing a multitude of trainings that she will tell you more about. I have no doubt that they and the, and the partners you have here in Philadelphia will make a difference and experience success. For more on these efforts, I'm also proud to announce, to introduce Fernando Armstrong, the director of the Philadelphia Regional Office, and I had the pleasure yesterday of presenting to him his 40th year service award. Mm -hmm. Now, he, he's not particularly conscious that it's 40 years of service, but when we were at the elementary school yesterday and the students were asking us questions, they looked at him and they looked at me and they said, how old are you guys? <laughs> he, he confessed and I said, Subtract one. Uh, but he is the leader of the region's experienced team of professionals conducting the 2020 census uh, in the regional office. And the regional office is a vital part of our national decennial team and its many partners across the nation. The effort is led by Al Fontenot and Tim Olson and including Deputy Director Ron Jarman, who are here today and, and may uh, assist us with answering some questions. We're very pleased they could make it today. But I am very pleased to introduce to you Director Fernando Armstrong. Thank you, Dr. Dillingham, and thanks for everyone to be here. Uh, just a quick thing on the, uh, on the interaction yesterday at the school. Uh, he was very quick at saying, I'm younger than him. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, Going to wait. <laughs> anyway, I'm, we're happy to be here. Uh, Philadelphia, as you know, is our home here in our regional uh, office, uh, which is just uh, very close to here. Uh, and we're celebrating the special connection between the Constitution and census. Uh, as the director said, 
Our goal in 2020, in the 2020 census, is to count everyone, count them once, and in the right place. And I want to uh, report that our operations to do that are very well, uh, going very well. Uh, we are on track, we are on time, and we are, budget-wise, we are doing very, very well. Uh, having said that, uh, we need everyone's help to make 2020 a successful census. Uh, we want to uh, make sure that every community, every state, every area knows the, the benefits that come to them as a result of the census. Hundreds of millions of dollars every year come back to the community in ways of schools, roads, hospitals, things that we need in the communities. Uh, public and private sector, nonprofit organizations, use our data all the time to make some critical decisions. Responding to the census is a civic duty uh, that helps our communities and uh, helps uh, the share of funding throughout the country. Census data are used to guide how more than $675 billion are distributed back to the communities. Leaders across all communities use census data daily, daily, to make critical decisions that affect all of us. For example, federal funds distributed using Census Bureau data include the Medical Assistance Program, the National School Lunch Program, State Children Health Insurance Program, and many more. Once again, I want to emphasize that the census is safe. The director said that, and you'll continue to hear that all the time. Even though we are using technical, uh, options that we didn't have before, the commitment to confidentiality, the commitment to protect people's information hasn't changed, has always been there and will continue to be there. All census employees take a lifetime oath to protect the confidentiality and would be subject to serious financial penalties and imprisonment if they were to fail maintaining their oath. We cannot and will not share responses with anyone, and that includes law enforcement at the federal level, the local level. There will never be any sharing of any information that uh, we collect uh, under Title 13. Let me mention just quickly where we are in terms of the address canvassing operation that is, uh, the, the director mentioned it, and is our large first operation in any census taking. Last month, uh, August 18th, uh, we officially began the address canvassing operation here in Philadelphia and throughout the nation. We are making sure that the master address file is accurate, that it contains all the addresses that need to contain, that we are able to mail out to them the invitation so that people come March of 2020 can start responding to the census. We depend heavily uh, on the most recent file from the U.S. Postal Service, and we are also using satellite imagery to improve that file. We're doing that in a way that we have not done in, before, uh, in the censuses before. In prior censuses, we are, uh, like in prior censuses, we are reviewing 100% of the nation's addresses. But the difference in 2020 is that a large number of the addresses were verified, were checked in office using the tools I just described. So in the field, we are going to be canvassing about 35% of the addresses of the country. Right now, we have approximately 40,000 temporary employees that are canvassing those areas using a laptop, making sure that all the addresses are there. 
The field work focuses on areas where addresses were added or removed over the last decade, or where changes might have occurred. Staff are examining millions of census blocks and comparing housing units visible in newer uh, satellite imagery that is available to us. In Philadelphia, in our region, in our nine states, I'm proud to say that we are 78, as of this morning, we are 78 complete in, in that operation. Uh, we are proud of that, and I'm sure that the other five regions uh, are in the country are also doing well, but not as well as we are. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, fir the first of our major operations, as I mentioned, and we are also in the process of hiring approximately or recruiting for 500,000 field staff that might be needed for the non-response follow-up next year. Hopefully, between now and then, we can engage with the community, we can engage with the country, and we can motivate them to do the census online, or do the census on the phone, or do the census on a questionnaire, so that we don't have to go and knock on their doors. In terms of the people that have already applied for those jobs, we have, as of uh, recently, we have 170,000 applicants that have already gone through the process to apply for the job. So that's very, very encouraging. We have people that want to do this job. We, are, we have people that are trying to get to, uh, to the, to, through the application process and that are going to be critical for us to be able to do the job. This year, we are recruiting, as I mentioned, uh, for the field operations, but we are also recruiting for the offices that are opening throughout the country. In our nine state region, we'll have 36 offices, and they are open, they are being staffed, and we, are, we feel we are ready to go for the next uh, operation uh, in 2020. Partnership is another big part of what we need to build. And I'm glad that Stefan is here, and I'm glad that the mayor in Philadelphia, like so many other mayors and so many other local officials throughout the country, have come to our call to partner with us so that jointly we can work, do, work on doing a good census. Right now, we are uh, aiming to have a minimum of 1,500 partnership specialists throughout the country to build those relationships, to engage with the partners, to educate the community about the importance of the census, that it's safe, that it's important, and that it's easy. We need to build the trust in preparation for 2020 and the partnership staff and the partnership program along with the many organizations that are working with us will make that possible. This is my fifth census and I am feeling as excited as I was on my first census. Excited because I see the use of technology and I see how we have evolved through the decades. And if you go to the Constitution Center, where we have an exhibit, you can actually see how we have progressed through the decades. That's exciting to me to be able to be part of that. But I am also very excited by the fact that we are gathering a team of partners and community organizations and local officials like Philly Counts, like Philadelphia, and so many other complete count committees throughout the country. I anticipate this will be an excellent census. And I, I, I want to welcome uh, all the communities and all the local governments to partner with us and work with us so that we can make this the best census ever. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Fernando, thank you for that. And now, I'd like to introduce a very, very special guest that we have with us here today to talk about their partnership with the U.S. Census Bureau. Ms. Stephanie Reed is the Executive Director of Philly Counts, 
2020. In this role, Ms. Reed is responsible for overseeing the City of Philadelphia's efforts to ensure a complete and accurate count, including but not limited to convening the City of Philadelphia's Complete Count Committee, executing and coordinating engagement strategy, and raising awareness through paid, earned, and social media efforts. Prior to this role, she served as the Chief Service Officer over the Mayor's Office of Civic Engagement and Volunteer Service, where she chaired the National Service Task Force and sat on the steering committee for the Corporate Volunteer Council. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Stephanie Reed. Good morning and welcome to Philadelphia. Good morning. Good morning. I am so happy to be here with you today to celebrate Constitution Day. And I am thrilled to join the US Census Bureau in welcoming you to this event and to our great city. Today is a historic day, and we're excited to kick it off with you. Could you hear me? <laughs> um, this year, Constitution Day falls at the beginning of Welcoming Week, a celebration of our nation's most important democratic values, freedom and opportunity. This has been a priority of Mayor Kinney's administration, making people feel welcome in our city. And that's why the 2020 census is a priority for us. I wanna thank Mayor Kenny for his vision in creating the Philly Counts Office. We are committed to supporting and elevating the work of the US Census Bureau to ensure every person is counted once, only once, and in the correct place. I also wanna thank the many elected officials who've shown their support, all of the members of Mayor Kenny's Complete Count Committee, our volunteers and the community-based organizations who have been working closely with us to prepare for today and for the future work that will ensure a complete and accurate count. Philadelphia has a large number of people who have historically been undercounted for a variety of reasons. We know that people are more receptive to information about the census when it comes from trusted sources, like a friend, a neighbor, or a community leader. Philadelphia has a long history of civic infrastructure that supports public works, and we aim to build on that infrastructure. Today, as part of this commitment, we're proud to launch our Census Champion Training Program. Our goal today is to train more than 1,000 people to talk about the census and why every person needs to be counted. A Census Champion is a trusted messenger who has the tools and knowledge to educate their neighbors friends, and family about why the census is important and why they should participate. The Census Champion Training Program is a 90-minute session in which participants will learn everything they need to know about the census and how to support the work of the U.S. Census Bureau and Philly Counts. Census Champion Training sessions will be delivered today all across our city in seven languages, English, Spanish, Mandarin, Cantonese, Arabic, Vietnamese, and Korean. To prepare for today, our small but mighty team of 10 has been working since April to build an infrastructure based on trust. Community organizations are a crucial part of our engagement strategy, and today they will be hosting more than 70 free trainings in the greater Philadelphia area. That is how we honor our Constitution by preparing in advance for a complete and accurate census, the cornerstone of our democracy. For anyone who's unable to join a training today in person, the Philly Counts Census Champion Training will also be available through an online learning platform called FactSumo that can also be accessed through their app. And I'm happy to say that September 17th is only the beginning. We already have more than a dozen additional trainings scheduled today after today and will continue to work with community-based organizations to offer the census champion training all around the city. We know that we're asking a lot of our community-based organizations who already do so much to support the most marginalized in our communities. That's why we're partnering with the Philanthropy Network Greater Philadelphia to offer many grant opportunities through the Philly Counts Action Fund. This fund will provide crucial small dollar grants to offset the cost of printing, supplies, 
and other census-related work. We know that our community-based partners are crucial to a complete and accurate count, and we want to support that in every way possible. So I'd like to thank you all for being here with us today and for shedding light on this important civic duty. I look forward to seeing many of you at our Census Champion trainings around the city later today. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Stephanie. Before we wrap up, the Census Bureau has two exciting data releases that are coming, and I'd like to tell you about them. Data from the Census Bureau 2017 Economic Census will be released later this week, September 19th, on our first look report. The 2017 Economic Census collects uh, data on 4.1 million business locations. The first look report provides U.S. level data by industry on general business statistics, such as the number of establishments, revenue, payroll, and even employment. All data releases are planned to be completed by December 2021. Later this month, the 2018 American Community Survey one-year data will be available for the nation, all states, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, every congressional district, every metropolitan area, and all counties and places with populations of 65,000 or more. This year, ACS data products will be released on the Census Bureau's new data dissemination platform, data.census.gov. To stay connected and up to date on the work we're doing and will continue to do, I invite you all to follow the Census Bureau on social media. You can find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and also on YouTube under the U.S. Census Bureau. We also are on Twitter and Instagram, and we are at, at U.S. Census Bureau. I encourage you as well to sign up for email notifications to stay up to date, and you can always contact the Public Information Office at PIO at census.gov for any questions or interview requests. Again, I'd like to thank you all for joining us and wish you all a happy Constitution Day. <laughs>